Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our arrays introduction. In the last video, we talked about declaring and initializing a string array in two different ways. We also talked about how to use a traditional for loop to access uh, elements of the array. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit more about default values uh, for data types within arrays. In the last video, we kind of talked about how when you make an array of strings and you don't actually tell Java what you want in each of the indexes of the array, you get something called null. So with strings, the default value is null, which basically means there is no reference, there is no address to any string. So it's just a blank address and that's called null. So let's take a look at some other uh, default values, uh, starting with int. Okay, so let's make an integer array called my nums, and we're going to make a new integer array with 10 spots. Now, so far right now, I actually haven't said what is in each of those indexes. So what does Java think is there? So let's print it. I remember if we want to print this, we have to borrow arrays to string method. And let's print my nums. And then take a look at the output. So you can see it right here. It's going to be a bunch of zeros. So the default value for integers is going to be zero. That means if Java needs to make an array full of integers, it needs something to put in there. Uh, it can't just be empty at all. Uh, it needs to be something, so Java picks the most logical thing it thinks of, and it's zero. So if we kind of take a look at, what, what do you guys think the default value is for double? So we can make a double array in the same way that we make any other array. I bet you can guess what's going to pop out. Yep, it's just the double version of zero, or 0, 0.0. Okay, so we're kind of getting a theme here. Null, zero, 0, 0, 0.0. What do you think the chars, the chars, default value is. Let's take a look. So remember chars are like letters, characters, anything like that. So let's take a look. So we actually get the empty string. Now remember what the empty string looks like? It looks like this. Or the empty char. The empty char looks like this. So it's totally empty. There's nothing even between these at all. Now you can kind of see spaces here. You might be a little suspicious of uh, is it the space character? Well I mean take a look at the first one. There's nothing in it. Not even a space. So the spaces that you see are actually a result of arrays dot to string. Uh, the protocol within that method says to fill the fill the array with its value, followed by a comma and a space. Then the value, then a comma and a space. So the space actually isn't coming from any of the elements of this array. It's just a consequence of the arrays print method, I guess, right? So so we have the element and then a comma and a space, and then we're done with the array. All right. So the char's default value is the empty char. So it's just emptiness. It's kind of the char version of 0 or 0, 0.0 or null. Okay. So remember with primitive types, we actually have to put something in there. With reference types like strings and other objects, it can say null. So let's just take a look at that one more time just to prove it to ourselves. So string, if we were going to make a string array, since you can kind of take a hint that the, the S of string is capitalized, it's not a primitive data type. It's a reference data type meaning it's just an address for how to find a string. Okay, so if we don't have an address there, uh, this is how you say there is no address. So if you need to review the difference between reference data types and primitive data types, uh, take a look in your textbook. It's early on in your textbook. Um, so anything that is a, an object, right? So I could make even, we don't really know this data type. I can make an array of objects too. And those are also reference types and we're also gonna get null. Okay, so anything that kind of has a capital, you can think of, that's probably a, a reference type variable. Okay, so that's kind of default type. So let's, let's go back to making, let's, make, let's go back to making an integer array for my nums, and then we can play with it. So let's fill this with some things. Actually, let's do this. Let's call this temperatures. This will be kind of a concrete example. Temperatures are 90, 45, 67, 98, 78, 34, 23, 81. Okay, don't forget to put your semicolon. Remember, you're allowed to initialize an array like this all on one line, okay? This is the quick initialize way. So let's go ahead and print temperatures then and just take a look, make sure it works. And let's print it. There we go, we have our array of temperatures. So do you remember in the last video, we used a traditional for loop to print out 
something like 90 as a temperature, 45 as a temperature, 67. And it was the familiar uh, for loop signature that we're used to. Let's talk about the enhanced for loop, which is great for arrays. Okay, well, I'm gonna write the syntax and I'll explain it, okay? So let's take a look. So take a look at this for loop signature. This is a brand new one called the enhanced for loop. It's really good for arrays. So what you have to do, much like with a traditional for loop, you have to declare a localized variable that you're going to use in here. Um, so let's call these all of these temperatures within the array. They're going to be temporarily called temp. Okay, um, that's just a coincidence. The temp and temporary part. So right here goes your the data type, individual data types within the array, and you give them a little localized variable name. Over here is going to go the name of your array. Okay, so it's your choice what this is, but this one has to be the name of the array. So basically, it's going to access every integer within the temperatures array. And we have to give it a name because we maybe want to do something with it. All right, so let's go ahead and print uh, kind of a statement like, if we print the for loop, take a look at what it does. So it, functionally, it's exactly the same as the traditional for loop, but much easier signature and much more readable. So when you see these, you can just think, okay, it's gonna go through every single temperature and temperatures and do something with it. Now, just to prove to you that you don't need to have this be this, you know, have anything to do with, right? So it doesn't matter what variable name you use, as long as you declare it as an integer. Um, and then this second argument over here is going to be the name of the array. Functionally, that's exactly the same, all right? So pause the video here. I'm gonna give you a little challenge. Can you use the enhanced for loop to print all of the temperatures that are above 70 degrees? So go ahead and pause it here and see if you can do that. Okay, hopefully you're back from being paused. I'm gonna change this back to being temp. So how would we print out all the temperatures greater than 70? Just add a little bit of logic in here, right? If the temp is greater than 70, I'm gonna print it a little bit. So I'm gonna say temp is above 70, right? So it'll only print that sentence for the temperatures that are above 70, right? So we can see our array. Did we get all of them or that are above 70? There's one, two, three, four of them. There they are. Okay, so enhanced for loops, extremely useful, very readable, uh, really great structures for looping through arrays where you don't have to kind of write that entire traditional for loop signature. Okay, so we're gonna be using these enhanced for loops a lot and you're gonna find them incredibly useful in labs and other functions. Um, I hope you like this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about um, about how arrays being actually a reference type variable or an object, um, how that maybe has some unexpected consequences when you run methods that take arrays as as arguments. So go ahead and check out video three coming up pretty soon and the challenges associated with them. If you have any questions for me, leave it in the comments, email me, whatever you want to do. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys soon. Happy coding.